Hello everybody, Cone Dodger here, and welcome back to iRacing, and one of these things is not like the other. I am the only United States competitor in this field today, so we'll see how that goes. Gotta watch out for the netcode. But we are at Silverstone Circuit. This is the older Silverstone Circuit, but not the old good Silverstone Circuit. It's the already started to be changed chicanes all over the place circuit. And uh, we're doing all right. What are the weather conditions today? 7,107. Okay, so it's pretty cool. Some of the sessions get much hotter than that. And my setup is not doing well in the hot. So hopefully that'll be okay. Here we go for a couple of qualifying laps. Coming out of the last two turns. The name of the game this week, again, has been understeer. An interesting thing has developed with the setups for this car. Everybody's running the most front wing you can possibly run, and then as little rear wing as you can possibly run. And pretty much everybody fighting the same understeer conditions. Some are just managing it better than others. If you know anything about me, you know me and understeer don't tend to get along too well. It's a decent run through the S's. The deltas are pretty low because I had some sessions that were quite cool. So we don't need to stick to that too close, I don't think. At least I hope not. So I'm take this lap pretty easy. A lot of this curve to the inside. Quick change the third so you can power out. So far, it's been a nice clean lap. Yeah, it must be warmer, because I didn't even get to six there. Sometimes I do. It's the only spot where the car has a little bit of a twitch to it. Not been able to dial that out of it. A little bit of lock up there is almost necessary to go maximum speed. Lots of understeer there. That, uh, that definitely hurts time. It's like we're ranked 11th of the field. First lap, but it's twice. <laughs> nope, nope, up 6th. Okay. Just hadn't counted the time yet. 7th. Hey, anywhere above 11th, and we're ahead of the game. a shame. Couldn't get the car downshift and it made us push wide. I don't know yet, but I have a feeling the draft's going to be pretty important here, so hopefully our qualifying position doesn't necessarily, you know, pin us in that position for the race. Hopefully we can make our way forward somewhat. the curve to uh, get the rear to rotate. We tried a lot of things in practice to try and dial out that understeer on the slower turns. Didn't really make any progress though. I think it's just the nature of the beast. And also, this race must be just a little bit longer than some because we're having to use five gallons of fuel for the race. Just have to wait forever and then off track. Yep. So, second lap won't count. Wasn't going to be any better anyway, I don't think. Nope, it was slower. Alright. And even better news the guy that wrecked us last week is here. So, watch out for the six car. Come on. There we go. So, we're not starting in, uh... Oops. There we go. Not starting where we thought we were. Green, green, green. One of these times I'm gonna get 
the clutch slip right there. One of these days. Car on your right. All clear, all clear. Clear, I think we're clear. Good start. Get my lap tracker up. Ooh, easy now. None of that silly business. Oh, it's so much easier now that it's on the steering wheel. Why did I not do that in the past, like, six years I've been playing this? Watch the arrow. Following people. All that downforce on the front wing is uh, not doing as much. Bottleneck right here. Can't we just have one track that doesn't have a bottleneck section in it? <laughs> Is that possible? All signs point to no. Taking it pretty easy, taking it pretty cautious at the moment. Hoping that uh, following some people will maybe help my line a little bit. We'll learn throughout the race and have better tires at the end. One can hope anyway. This is kind of one of those tracks I'm just trying to get through. I don't, uh, don't particularly get along with this one too well. And reading the forms, everybody's ready to hit the next one. We're heading to Donington. Okay, well, we at least did gain one position there, I guess. Somehow. I don't know how. I don't watch the understeer coming through there. Well, I guess because we're running so little wing, the draft is not... Not doing too much for us. Maybe it's rubber banding us together a little bit. Ooh, don't get up on a curb. That's no good for business. Kick your rubber in my face. Ooh, alright, alright. One of the very few things I did with this setup to change it in the end was uh, going to my typically overzealous rear brake bias. Great for dialing out that little bit of turn-in understeer. But you gotta watch it doing stuff like that. <laughs> Get away from you. Pretty easily. Get up on the curb there. This guy's actually a little bit offline. He, if you can get your right tires to the curb, you're in good shape. If you can't, you might be in trouble. Just gonna have to wait for some mistakes on this one because we're not, uh, not getting that great of a run anywhere. Bottleneck. It'll be very interesting when we get to Spa again after running Spa in the experimental season. And these cars had such a huge draft effect there that I've not seen at all this season. 
interesting to see if it uh, if it's gone there as well. I really thought that would be one of the themes of the season is a bunch of drafting passes. But so far, it's not been the case. The three of us are going to be stuck together for a while, and then there's another group behind us that's kind of stuck together. Ouch. Why that has to be so bumpy right there? One little off moment threw me off with the whole S's. So let's try and draw back into the 8 and away from the 13. I think I might need to put a little bit more dead zone in my gas pedal. Maybe that's why it's not shifting correctly. A little bit of Extra throttle input throwing off my rev matches. Racer's excuses. This is not like Interlagos where you can't run near each other. can I do there, you know? I can't swing wide because there's no grip out there. It's a strange situation. Even in Formula 1, Silverstone and passing just... Ooh, I totally missed my turning point there. Probably based off of him missing his. Yeah, we're all starting to slide around a little now. And he's got the 13 right up with us. Good line through there. or anything this week because uh, I'm very comfortable with the car, it's just not very fast. So the two usually go hand in hand. The car's real comfortable, you're probably not going very very quickly. A pretty decent little lap here. gear there to get the car to rotate. He is very slow in this particular section. Sign of maybe his front tires going off a little bit. Alright, much better. Hitting marks again. run out of here. It's got the potential. If you want to get me outside, that'd be great. Maybe you did not think the outside was the good way to go. But I think it is. And I tried to keep him pinned down to the inside so that he would get more understeer. It seemed to have worked. Okay, don't pull it away. 
You worked really hard for that position. <laughs> Get up to the seven. Something happened behind us. And it doesn't sound like it was good. That's the same section he was really going slow in, so maybe something happened there. The yellow flag up here. I don't know what for. All by ourselves now. That's too much. We actually made up a little time there. Just take little tiny chunks out of it. That was good though. I felt really good about that pass. So let's see if we can feel it even better by getting up here to the 7 car. Are they still, uh, they're still being angry? Wait a minute, is that the guy that wrecked me last week? <laughs> Still angry at him. Calling me an idiot for something he did. Use the curb, have to rotate. We're getting here. We're making the progress. We're making progress. <laughs> that didn't do us any favors. Being much more aggressive with the curves through there than I was in practice. I think it's uh, the pivotal factor in my increased pace through there. Only halfway through the race, so lots to do yet. Plenty of time to catch him. Like I mentioned, one of the longest races of the season, I think. A little bit understeer there. Try not to push the front tires too hard because. Yeah, they seem to grain pretty easily. Darn good years. I don't think many people are doing that in the third year there. I just really like the way it unloads the car. a little bit of space this time, but not a disaster. Try and just take it a little easy through one. This is where I was making up time. That's pretty good again. He actually did it quite well himself. Our stuff feels pretty good. It's not under steering nearly as bad as I feared it would by this point of the race. It's actually seemingly gotten a little looser. 
is a welcome change. As long as it doesn't keep getting looser, then it could be bad. Using all the track. Fourth right here because we're actually picking up a little speed as the fuel burns off. The extra speed made me too fast on exit. I'm surprised that those green curbs aren't considered off track. You know how these guys are. Four, good lap. Getting it through one for sure. I'm running it ragged edge through there. This is the hardest part of racing. When you have about a, a, a two second gap where you can just see the guy. Trying to control yourself to not push too hard. If you can get within like a second of them, it's a whole different ballgame. Making up that two second gap is a real problem. Those the four cars actually falling back into our clutches. That could be good for me. Good line through here. I'm just patting myself on the back. And get Kurt to play high racing. I'll just do impersonations of him. Might be the closest we ever get. Point four. Seems like we're stuck there. I always lose like three tenths and a one. Ooh, that was that was the line right there. If I could keep doing that. We'll be getting somewhere. That's using all of the track right there. All I really need to do is put a little bit of pressure on him so he feels like he has to push faster. Little does he know I'm pushing as hard as I possibly can right now. <laughs> he doesn't need to know that though. how you do it. Thanks OpenDiff, appreciate it. Not really. Good lap, good lap. Just trying to go. how much of the curbs I'm able to use. That was not the case uh, a mere 30 minutes ago when I was practicing qualifying.
much to my detriment, he's running like very, very consistent laps. Just needing to make one little mistake. I'll be there. be a great points week for us, but um, I didn't really anticipate it being so. But who knows, we'll see. I don't know what the strength field is looking like. Could be better than I thought. I think this is like the European strength and field crew. So maybe it'll be alright. I'm infiltrating their, their run groups. Oh, I lost a lot of time that lap. Because it, it was 145, that's how. He's running very consistent laps, but I am not. It's like the only part of the track I'm really consistently making up time on him. Most of this race is just gravy. I was, <laughs> I was just happy to make a nice clean pass on someone. I didn't freak out about it. I didn't screw up my own line. And I was watching uh, True Racer last night. He was doing Lotus 79 at the Nurburgring. And he was just having this really tight, like, all the cars within a second battle. And his, his racing style is so aggressive all the time. It's really, like, the exact opposite of me. It's uh, certainly ended up up with him having some, well, I would say, unnecessary incidents. But then it also put him up in position to do some just crazy passes and make up tons of time. I have not driven the Lotus 79, but we're only a few weeks away from our Nurburgring trip ourselves. I just saw someone off to the right. Majorly screwed me up, but it was a position nonetheless, I think. Yeah, he's five seconds behind us. So I need to drive pretty darn well here. That's my main objective now, is to hold off that guy. Pretty rare you hit anything here, although he's still falling back. Yeah, unless it's off of this turn here, or the next set, those are the two places you can really destroy a car. Right here. I didn't need to demonstrate it, game. Thank you very much. Two left to go. Just two to go. Let's keep the, the pace right where we've been. I mean, he's going to close in on me unless he's damaged. It's going to be a second lap faster. Hey now, none of that. <laughs> none of that. It's not tire wear. I don't think the car is driving any worse than it was in the beginning of the race. Yep, I'm still able to pull off that line. Then we're doing all right. 
Oh, do we have two go off? Maybe. So that's a sixth now. This could be a decent payday or payday. Points day. Well, I mean, he's not going to catch it because he's busy typing things like idiot. Is that the go-to European insult, idiot? I seem pretty familiar with it. things you could be called. I'm a bigger fan of Dingleberry myself for my insult of choice, but you know, to each their own, to each their own. Somebody else want to crash up ahead of us? That'd be... That'd be okay. Ooh, nice line. Good job, B. It's all about the downshift point right there. determines how quick you can go through that last right-hander. But yeah, tires have held up very nicely, so... Must have done something right this race. <laughs> Every other week we've been fighting a car that's pretty much trashed by the end. It's on pace to be one of my better laps. Oh, we do have one going off. What's, what's going on? Is he out of fuel? What's going on here? Must be. Nope, he's damaged. All clear, all clear. So he maybe got hit in the rear? All I know is, we just came home with a top five in a race where I thought we were going to be fighting for a top ten. Wow. I, yeah, I don't know what happened there. Something big. There you go, idiot. The idiot again. Got the idiot. Well, there's a couple words before it, but... Here's the pass. See what I mean about how I was trying to position the car a little bit more to the right than I even needed to, just to keep him kind of at bay. But then, uh, what happens further up the road? So, yeah, what happens back here after our... I have a feeling he checks the brakes right here. That's exactly what happened. Same thing that he was doing to me that was freaking me out, but the other guy just wasn't prepared for it. And uh, that's all it took. Alright, wow, well, I guess the theme of the week for this week is it's better to be lucky than good, because I don't think I was the quickest car out there, and I was actually a little disappointed in my overall pace, although my fastest lap time was very competitive. I mean, it would have been like the, uh, the fourth or fifth fastest lap time of the race in the end. Definitely lost a little bit too much time early to get up and fight with some of the front runners. However, we started in 12th place that race and ended up in 5th. So, there is absolutely no way I could be disappointed in the results of this one. All the eye ratings of the cars around us are pretty well ahead of ours. So, yeah, there's, there's zero disappointment in me after this race. That was the most I could ever hope for out of a Silverstone race. The strength of field was kind of low, 24.96, so we didn't get a ton of points, but 114 is still a really good result, and should help us in our little battle with True Racer. 
I don't really think I'm going to beat True Racer, but as long as I can stay around him, I'll be happy. For charity this week, they're going to get uh, some money out of me. Not for incidents, only only one incident that race for 50 cents. Seven dollars going to them for positions gained. So that's really cool. Seven dollars fifty cents going to Child's Play through Farlands or Bust. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next week in Donington.